What's up, YouTube? Oh. Wow. Nice lazy Sunday here. Hope everybody's doing all right. Got a new tool I wanted to talk to you all about. Use it on the road. Use it around everywhere, actually. Done, uh, I messed with plastic and metal and wood and I got all kinds of weird little projects going on here at home. And I'm out on a job, too. But I uh, did a video a while back about this beast, the Metabo uh, die grinder, model number GE710 Plus. This one is, uh, I don't know, it's probably about a year and a half old, I guess. Maybe two years old. It might be older than that. Um, I left it out. I actually took it off my, I got a job trailer that I used for, for going on the road. And I, I left it at home because I was doing a home project and I uh, told myself not to forget it and I forgot it. So I got on the road and realized that I didn't have my die grinder and uh, got on my, my favorite place to go shopping and buying stuff. I prefer to buy local if I can, uh, but not the local stuff don't have a lot of stuff that I need. Uh, Portaband portable blades for one. I got a little uh, Milwaukee, it's like a three inch porta band with 18 volt battery in it. Uh, there's a local place that sells the blades if I can get there before the only other guy in town that seems to buy his blades and he, he buys them all. So every time I go there, I find out that they don't have any blades. So I kind of got tired of trying to go there and get blades. I guess they don't want to stock up any more blades, <laughs> but I'll, I'll go to Amazon and pick them up. It's the same price. Um, you get Amazon Prime. It's, it's, you get the shipping for free. So, um, But like I said, I, I prefer to buy local because then you're supporting your local community, your local uh, businesses and things like that. They're making money off of your business and vice versa uh, if they got the parts. So long story short, apparently, um, get on the road, find out I don't have my die grinder, and I get online, Amazon, and I get to looking, and I, I like the Metabo. Uh, the thing I didn't like about the Metabo, if you watched the other video, is the collar cracked. Uh, and I ended up having to get another collar from Metabo. But graciously and, and kindly enough, they sent me a free one. And I thank them for that. Um, but I wanted to try something different. I've always had good luck with Makitas. I've had a lot of Makita stuff, drill drivers and uh, cordless drivers and drills and... Uh, corded drills and everything like that and probably still got some more stuff around here uh, actually i think i got a a grinder that i bought it's a four inch grinder i bought back in 1998 and i think it still works it's over in my uh, grinder boneyard i probably got about 10 or 15 different grinders over there they're, they're junk and i think that little four inch still works <laughs> oddly enough but uh got on amazon picked this up um, had him drop ship it to my hotel and picked up a couple burr bits while I was there. Um, so far, so good. This is a Makita GD0800C. One quarter inch, 6.6 .6 amps, 120 volts. Um, Amazon was $226.84 from the one buyer that I got here on my paperwork. Um, this is... A variable speed, 7,000 to 28,000 RPM, electronic speed control, maintains constant speed under load. One quarter inch variable speed die grinder, double insulated. This one quarter inch die grinder is slender double neck die cast aluminum gear housing for easy handling. It's internal labyrinth construction. Wow, that don't sound... Wow. Protects bearings and motors from dust and debris for long life. Okay, well, that makes sense. Also has a dial for speed control for setting optimal speed. Various materials includes the following one quarter inch collet, side handle wrench, a 13 inch, 19 millimeter. So, uh, and the amps, overall height, top to bottom, 2.3 inches wide, uh, 5.8 inches side to side. Overall depth, front back, 17.8 inches and 5.55 pounds. Straight off of Amazon. Yeah, I cheated. I didn't remember all that. But, uh, okay. So you know all that technical mumbo-jumbo. Internal labyrinth of 
Yeah, to protect from dust. Okay. Well, I'll leave that to somebody else to take it apart and figure that out. I'm not going to do it. It's got the variable speed on it. I like the variable speed because uh, it, it seems to make the, the burr bits last longer. If you're not really going in there and, and hog wild at, at 28,000, 29,000 RPM. Because this does say 29,000 RPM on it. Um, so I don't know where the 28's from, but that's Metabo. So, or not Metabo, Makita. Too many M's. Uh, Makita, Makita. And uh, <laughs> one's Japanese, one's German. Made in Japan. Right, right there, right there, right there. Made in Japan. So I like that. I like the Japanese products. They make some good stuff. Um, and Germans do too. But apparently they haven't figured out the collet. Um, that was the only thing I didn't like about the, the Metabo was the collet was... Uh, got to find my wrenches. The collet cracked on it. That was kind of my pet peeve. Uh, take them apart here. No, we're not taking it apart. If you want to, if you want to see this shit taken apart, go to AVE and comment on one of his videos or send him a message and request that he buy one of these and take one of these apart. Or maybe he can have somebody send him one and take it apart. I'm not going to do it. Let me get this off there. And screw it all the way, dopey. All right, so there you go. There's your nut and your collet. Let's look at the... Matabo. Oh, it is. All right. Glad I looked at this. So basically the same. Well, they're pretty much doing the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if one fit in the other. Let's see. Matabo. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Matabo fits the Makita, and the Makita will fit the Matabo. I don't know. I don't know why the Metabo cracked in the first place. I know the the nut they had before was a lot thinner. Metabo's on the top and Makita's on the bottom. Seems like the one I got before this one was really, it had a really thin wall in here. And it wasn't this wide on that Metabo. Um, it was actually thinner than this one. But it cracked right up the side. And I got a whole video on that, and I probably actually got a picture of it. Um, I thought there might have been some difference in the nut and the collars, but I can't I can't explain why the Metabo, when you use it, it 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 loosens up. I know I know it's violent. These things are violent and they vibrate and shake like dog poop and pea seeds, but um I can't I can't explain why it does that. Um the difference between the two is on the Metabo, you got the push button and you rotate it around and then you tighten it down. And they do have a spot there for a wrench and I suggest using that spot. Um, I don't have a wrench to fit that. It's real thin. Probably have to make something up out of a cheap old wrench that I got out in the shop to make it work. But uh, it always it always vibrates loose. I don't. The reason I don't like tightening against this thing is because I don't want that pin to break. And then you got that piece floating around there. You got to take it apart and all that good stuff. Back to the Makita. I've used it on two or three jobs. I stick the burr bit in there. I take my little wrench and I take my other wrench and I snug it down just like that. And out of probably 50 or 60 holes that I've, probably more than that, that I've actually used this on, um, it hasn't loosened up. You tighten it and it's done. It's one and done. That's basically what it is. Um, what I use this for 90% of the time is plug welds. Uh, if you know plug welds, you have a, a back piece and an outer piece, or an inside piece and outer piece. And you cut a hole in it, or there's already a hole cut in it, so you have something like that. And they want you to come in and start welding and weld it all the way out. Uh, engineering nightmare. That's what I call them. A big pain in the butt. Um, on the things that I'm working on, some people that aren't welders or are lazy welders will come in and they'll actually take the welding rod and they'll weld up right there. And they'll close it off. It looks like a weld. You can't tell it's not a weld unless you're an inspector with 
five, six, seven thousand dollar, or probably more, uh, UT machine that you can actually test and see that it's not, you know, connected. Um, and that's what they've been doing is they've been going out and inspecting these things and finding out that whoever built these things didn't weld them all the way up. So we're having to go in there, and the easy ones are the ones where they just put a cover over it and you can cut the hole out and clean it all up and then you got clean metal back here and you start welding back all the way out. The hard ones are the ones where the guy attempted to do it or wasn't a welder or didn't care or all of the above. And he'll actually go in there and just, he'll just try and carry, he'll take a welding rod and he'll shove it in there and he'll just, you know, kind of fill it up as much as he can. And then when that rod's done, he'll take another one and just kind of smash it in there and, and, and there's no slag chipping or wire brushing or anything like that. We just try and glob it in there as best as we can and then and make it fill all the way out. And when you do get all the way out, it's full of porosity and slag and canyons and valleys and um, kind of looks like, I don't know, Moab? <laughs> or the Grand Canyon? And with all kinds of crap in it and meteorites and asteroids and all kinds of garbage. So you got to get in there, wash everything out, you don't want to take out parent metal of the pipe. You're trying to keep it sized where the engineer wants it sized. So you clean all that stuff out as best as you can with a torch. And then you got to come in with a die grinder. And you die grind it and then finish the hole out and clean it and polish it and, and do everything you can. And then on the inside, I take one of these burr bits and I'll take it in there and, and grind it on the back side to clean off the parent metal on your inner piece that you're welding to. And then on the edge, you know, you just do the edge and clean it all the way up like that and clean up that, the outer metal. So you have a good clean surface to start welding all over again. And that's basically what I got the, this for. The, uh, back to the beginning, I forgot my Metabo. I ordered this on Amazon. And like I said, it was $226, $227. On Amazon Prime, you get free shipping. They drop shipped it to the hotel. I got several burr bits to go with it because I can't find them local either. Um, I've probably done 60, 50, maybe 100 uh, holes with this thing so far. I, the nut stays tight. I haven't had no problems out of it. Um, it's, it's beefy. And it fits good in your hand, though, but this is all real good for we can hold it and stabilize it. Uh, I find that these things like to kick out and, and do crazy stuff, kind of like a, a cut-off wheel on a grinder. Uh, they get a little bit violent if you're not careful with them. Uh, so far, I've, I haven't had, like I said, I haven't had to tighten this down. On the Metabo, it seems like i got to tighten it down every other hole or every couple holes. you got to get your wrenches out, crank it down, and tighten it down. The collet just doesn't stay tight for some reason. Um, I'm no engineer, so I can't tell you what the, you know, maybe it's the surface area or the contact area that it that the contacts the bit that blah, 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 something, something. Engineering, blah, blah, blah stuff. Um, I, I don't know that. Uh, but this one does, it, it stays locked. I haven't had it really come loose. Um, the SJS system is uh, more, more or less a clutch, I believe, is what, from my understanding, reading it, um, if you get into a bind, it'll stop and the motor will freewheel and it'll keep it from smoking her down. I have uh, actually killed a couple grinders that way. Just uh, get it hung up in something and, and kind of, you know, old junky grinder just to see what happens. And you just pretty much hold the trigger wide open and then the smoke comes out. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> but there's probably a grinder or two over there that, that had that happen to it. It's uh, pretty interesting to see what happens, you know, playing around with old junky stuff. But, uh, so yeah, this is, uh, gave you the model number on it. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm happy with it. I had to, it stays on the trailer, so I don't use it a whole lot. The Metabo I actually use more for like the pipe when I'm welding pipe, um, doing back bevels and things like that. Um, it's, it tends to, I don't know, for some reason the collet stays, stays tight there. Um, it doesn't want to, maybe it's just because of how you're working it and, and and on those plug welds, it, it, it hits or bumps or vibrates or does something. I don't know what it is. Uh, but it does. It, it still comes loose, but maybe I'm just not using it that much to find out. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Anyhow, 
Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Um, if you want it to be taken apart and checked out and see what kind of plastic it is and bearings and and all that stuff like that, I recommend going to see AVE and uh, on his channel. I've watched him about a bunch and I like his videos. Um, and uh, maybe you guys can convince him to take one apart and look at it. Uh, I I don't need to do that. It works great. And if I take it apart and put it back together, it might not work great. Uh, I can I can take stuff apart and put things back together, but I don't like to do that on my new stuff. So uh, not gonna happen. <laughs> but uh, so far so good on it. Do a little run test here for you. Let you get hear it. And I usually run this on the on a lower speed. It just tends to be less violent. Um, this one seems to be a little bit noisier. Maybe run side by side here and see. All right, so here's your, your Makita. That's on number one. We'll go up to number two. I don't, I don't know if there's a bearing noise or what that is. Maybe it's just too slow for it. I tend, like I said, I tend to run it. I tend to run it a lot lower than. I don't like to run them wide open. It seems to make the burr bits last a lot longer if you, you run them slower. No. And I don't know how, I really don't know how much the burr bits are. I just know that I don't like buying them. And then this is the, yeah, the Metabo is, it's a lot. Let's see, we'll go back to number one, because we're up here on, yeah, we're on number one. So it's a lot quieter. You can see the difference in it. Or hear the difference in it. Yeah, so there's there's a difference in the, you know, maybe it's the German quality mower. I don't know. Um, made in Germany, made in Japan. But I can't really say nothing bad about the Metavo. I mean, other than that, um, cow it wanting to to loosen up on me. That's the or the nut loosening up on me. That's the only thing that I had bad to say about the the Metavo. Uh, I really like it. It's a, it's a good die grinder, and so is the Makita. Like I said, this one's just a little bit noisier than the Metabo. Um, if I was if I was a, a, a money man or a guy that had time in his hands, I'd take them both apart and compare them, but I really couldn't tell you what the parts inside, you know, I couldn't make it good enough to describe the differences in them and why one's noisier than the other. But uh, this one works good. Uh, like I said, I'm, we'll, we'll keep on plugging away at it and see how it holds up it is makita i have a feeling it's going to last a good long time and the metabo I'm, I'm really pleased with it too um i'd buy both of them again and i don't think you go wrong with it like i said this one well as you heard this one's a little bit quieter than that one i don't know what is in here that's making it maybe it's a different rpm um i don't know what let's just see here first it says right there, first, uh, I guess first gear is 10,000 RPM, where first gear on this one was, uh, I got it back here on, let me look here, I got it, I just saw it here, it's because it's 7,000, 8,000 RPM, so I'm, I'm assuming that first gear on the Makita is 7,000 RPM, so maybe that's the difference between them, this, this, this one's at 7, and this one's at 10. Um, but this one, even this one at 10 is still a little bit noisier. I mean, if you go up to, if you turn it up to like number two or number three, you would you would think it would be a little bit quieter, I suppose. Uh, we'll put it on number, we'll put it on number three. And yeah, and that's, I don't know what that noise is. Maybe it's just a motor. Or maybe it's the kind of motor. I'm not too sure. But here's a uh, here's the Batabo on number three. Yeah, there's there's a definite difference, but I, I can't explain to you what it is. But um, if you buy either one of these, the, the Batabo or the Makita, they're in my opinion, and in using them both, 
in the same situations and, and doing the, the exact same work. Um, they're both outstanding. Uh, they both hold up good. They both throw them nasty little shavings with the, the burr bit shavings, you know, them little suckers get stuck in everything. You'd be picking them out of your gloves and your hands and your shoes and I had them in my socks and underneath beanie hats and everything else. They're, they're pretty, when you use them, cover up because them burr bit shavings get everywhere. And if the wind's blowing, even worse. But uh, that's 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 what I think or my review on the, on the Makita. Um, happy with it, very happy with it, and very happy with the Metabo. Um, just the only thing is, like I said, the, the collar on the Makita stays tighter than the Metabo. Um, if I get a wrench for this, I might try a wrench on that instead of trying to use this pin. I just use the pin use most of the time and tighten it down with a tiny crescent wrench. Um, and the way the Metabo sounds, it sounds like it would be smoother and uh, wouldn't vibrate the end as much. Uh, but I don't know. The uh, Makita is a just a hair longer, about an inch longer than the Metabo. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Like I said, um, both of them are excellent and well worth the money. Um, they've saved me time. I'm going to try and find a, a wire wheel that I can stick in the end of one of these and maybe take them both out there and I can use one for grinding and one for wire wheeling because uh, most plug welds are really hard to get in there and clean out really good and they really need to be cleaned out. Um, and I do, I scrape them and brush them and clean them and when I get far enough out, you can wire wheel them and get all the stuff off them and then they come out and inspect them and UT them and uh, mag flux and all that kind of crap. So we're doing it right because that's how it needs to be done. But uh, anyhow, that's it. I uh, wanted to show, talk to you about the Makita and kind of do a comparison. I, I actually did a couple videos on this to, at first, just starting with the Makita. And then I got to thinking about the Metabo and talking about the, the nut and the collet on it and trying to compare it. And I figured that what I needed to do was start back at square one and just get them both side by side so you can check them out. And I think it worked out better that way. You could actually see them and hear them and uh, get a comparison on them. They're both, they're both probably, they're within a, a half a pound of each other, I would bet. Um, so no difference in the weight, but uh, yep. So that's that's the Makita and the Metabo. Um, it's amazing, there's $500 worth of dang die grinders right there. Goodness gracious. Uh, <laughs> I guess it really puts it in perspective when you, when you get to thinking about it. Uh, but yeah, either way you go, if you go with either one of these, um, in my opinion, you ain't going to go wrong. Like I said, this one here, it, it, it doesn't work loose. I haven't had it work loose. Now I'm going to try this one here with a wrench on this side and oh, I mean, this wrench is, that's a right size wrench right there. We'll have to take a 13 and we'll try and, and tighten that down with a 13 and see if it holds up a little bit better with two wrenches on it instead of using the, the push pin there to lock it. Um, but yeah, check out, uh. That I will put a link in the description for the Makita. Um, I'll probably I'll probably put a link in the description for the Metabo too. Um, that way you got it if you want to check them both out and look at them and do some price shopping or something like that. It'll be for Amazon because you know that's where I shop. And again, I'm not plugging Amazon and okay, yeah, I'm plugging Amazon because I buy a lot of crap there, and it's convenient. It's awesome. I'm like, okay, I'll just be up front with you it's awesome i like amazon i shop the heck out of amazon <laughs> so um both links will be at amp for amazon because that's where i bought, bought both of these at was amazon um i actually bought the burr bits at amazon too i don't know who i bought these from um or even what kind they are they're they're pretty tough too uh, i try to make these last as long as i can at the, if i want a job and i do 60 plug welds i try and make a burr bit last for 120 or 200 plug welds actually i think i bought this one a couple of years ago and it's got a couple little nicks out of it but i try to make them things last as long as i can but uh anyhow links in the description thanks for watching sorry about the length of the video uh, i want to do a real good comparison on these though once i get to thinking about it and doing it um hopefully this will work out for you or you can check them out and you get a good you get some good input on on these if you're looking at a die grinder uh and hopefully if you got any questions about them let me know um if you got any comments please comment and like i said i was trying to keep this short but 
and it didn't work out. But hopefully you can pick up some stuff on this and get a good pair comparison between a Metabo and Makita. Um, again, Makita, let me do this one more time, GD0800C, and the Metabo was a GE710 Plus. So, uh, like I said, I'll put the links in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, again, any comments, leave a comment, like if you like the video. And I'll work on trying to keep these a little bit shorter. But, you know, I, I just want to make sure that I get everything in the video so you all can have good information to go on. Y'all be safe out there, and I will talk to you later.